Well, good morning and welcome to the LBJ Grasslands outside of Decatur, Texas for part one of a two-part evaluation of the Merrill Moab 2 tactical side zip 8-inch boot. Now, I was asked to review this product and I do like to accommodate these requests whenever I can, particularly when I think the product may have relevance to my primary outdoor activity which is wilderness search and rescue. I specialize in night operations, so it is a little bit unusual for me to be filming during daylight hours, but I do believe that a daytime review is the best environment for today's exercise. Now, this is the first major experience that I've had with the Merrill brand. In the past, I've worn Salomon Forces, Keen Base 511 by far, the boot that I've worn the most over the last decade is Rocky Alpha Force. So I was actually a bit excited to give these Merrells a try. Now, I typically wear about a size 10 and a half to 11. My foot is just slightly on the narrow side. So I tried out an 11 and even with a stock insole, from the second I stood up and took those first steps, fit and comfort was really good even with the factory insole which I have since replaced. I've worn them for about three and a half weeks now indoors outdoors standing up for two hours in light rain about uh, four or five hours out in the field under what I would call moderately difficult terrain but I still have questions perhaps the same type of questions you have. How will these hold up under really difficult and challenging terrain conditions? The type that I encounter a lot in wilderness search and rescue. Will they hold up to one or two hours of rain exposure? They're advertised as being waterproof. Will they hold up for a long period of time? Will they fall apart after six months? Well, I can try to answer a few of those questions in these first couple of reviews. Now, today's exercise is land navigation. I'm going to try to hit a number of marks out here in the grasslands. Two constraints. Constraint number one, no map, no compass, no GPS navigation. Constraint number two is I have to take the most efficient route in terms of distance. That means I'm going to have to navigate two and cross some very challenging shortcuts today. In terms of start point, behind me back to those trees is the Tadra Trailhead. It's a campground. It also serves as a trailhead for all of the named horse trails here at the grasslands. We're not going to do too much in terms of trails today. Lots of open territory though. My first mark is the one horse bridge. So let me set start time. Okay, there we go. I'm going to finish getting geared up and then I'll head out and explain the first route. So it's been about 10 minutes. You can see the radio towers there in the distance. That's one of the uh, landmarks I use for orientation. I'm headed out along this uh, rocky dirt path. The One Horse Bridge is along the Yellow Trail. Now, the Yellow Trail starts out from Tawdra and goes back around behind this way works its way out to about the one mile mark and it crosses the road then goes back in this direction way out crosses the road again so you might think that one shortcut and this would actually be a good idea would be not to follow the yellow trail but just to stay on the road and then try to pick the yellow trail up closer to the two mile mark that's not bad but it's still nearly two miles from that point to the uh, one horse bridge. I'm going to show you a riskier and more challenging route 
but it will not nearly a mile off of the total distance. So far on this uh, uneven rocky path, I'll have to say that uh, ankle support has been excellent and uh, heel support, heel cushion so far has been uh, really good. The challenge will be later on when we get to some of these lower points where there's still some uh, wet rock and muddy areas from prior rain and I'll check back in when we get close to the entrance to the shortcut. Okay, there's the time. Here's the road that I came in on. Uh, uphill, downhill, over dirt, over rocks, over mud. You can see those depressions formed by vehicles. There's still water in all of them. Walk right through that. Uh, Merrill does have a rep for providing a very good mix between fit, comfort, and performance. I would have to say in this first leg, even though I think it's just a warm-up, I'm really impressed with the uh, comfort of the Moab 2 tactical so far, but that was just a warm-up. Now, if we continued by what you could see on a map, we would go down this road, oh, about another 500 yards, pick up where the yellow trail crosses, and then take that all the way down and back up and eventually we would reach the one horse bridge from this point that's still about 2.4 miles just very very roughly we're really going to get off the beaten path because we're headed out this way this will take us to the entrance to the shortcut and I'm going to show you how to cut about a mile off of that uh, route Well, I'm about uh, 420 yards down the path according to pace count. It's been over a year since I've been out here, and the uh, U.S. Forest Service has done a considerable amount of improvement and clearing. That was not here when I was here before. This is the direction that we want to go. The last time I came through here, this growth was probably a good six, eight feet high if not more and there were more trees through here so it's very difficult to see the uh, entrance to the path but now you can see there's a very clear path through the trees there that's where we're headed but it's all open terrain so I think this is going to be a very good uh, test for the footwear and it's only about 900 yards or so to hook up with the yellow trail and we will do so at a point that's only about 250 280 from the uh, one horse bridge so time to quit talking about it and just do it so another thing that wasn't out before out here before is this gully this used to be a fairly level path all the way out you can see it's actually gotten some traffic over the last year so it's been opened up However, the ground out here at the grasslands is fundamentally unstable. So over the course of, you know, literally six months to a year, you can go from very flat terrain to something like this, and it gets worse over time. So time to get across and just uh, keep on going. Okay, made it to the other side. I just want to make a brief note about the tread on the Moab 2 Tactical. When you're working across terrain like this, it's good to keep more of a sideways orientation going down and up. And particularly when I'm on a downward slope, I've noticed that that tread, uh, when your foot is oriented to the side, tends to just lock into the ground really well. So I, uh, I wanted to point that out. Okay, there's a time update. It's uh, looking like the vehicle tracks have uh, pretty much run out but that's okay i just need to keep heading pretty much due northwest and i'll be in good shape well remember what i said about unstable ground this is all new looks like i'm going to have to try and work my way around i'll check back in when i get to the uh other side. Now we got ourselves a little bit of a test here.
All right, made it through. The big challenge is coming up right through there. Nothing but uh, mud. I would not characterize these as no slip boots, but they, they held up pretty well. And uh, I made it across to the other side. I'm in one piece. I'm still vertical. I know that that direction is approximately northwest, so time to keep on going. All right, pay dirt right there. We just hooked up with the yellow trail. One horse bridge is in that direction. That will be my next check-in. All right, there's a time update and there is mark number one, the one horse bridge. I'll show you around just a little. It's a really nice morning, so I think I'm gonna take a brief hydration break. Even though this is an exercise, land nav exercise and a product review, it's always nice when you get a chance. Nobody's life is on the line right now, so I can afford to take, you know, five minutes or so, just sit down, relax, enjoy being out in nature. And this will be a good test after a rest interval. No one likes restarting a cold engine, so uh, I'll see uh, what the footwear feels like. Uh, after I've rested for a while, based on my experiences this first leg, and then we'll talk about the second mark. All right, time check. That was a nice rest interval. I was really impressed when I stood back up. I thought I'd feel some stiffness or something in my feet. I continue to be impressed by the comfort of these Moab 2 Tactical. Uh, all the other things still stand out. Ankle support, heel cushion, uh, arch, stability when I'm moving sideways down an incline, uh, all performing very well. So, next mark is the Royal Gorge Bridge. This is the one horse. There's a creek down there, so you might think, well, the Royal Gorge must be somewhere along that creek. And you're exactly right. Royal Gorge is in that direction. Now, conventional wisdom would say that we continue along the Yellow Trail, take it all the way up to the Piney Woods Campground, come out, go to the fork. Instead of continuing along the Yellow Trail, come down the segment of the blue-orange known as the Turkey Trot Trail, and then the blue, orange, and yellow all meet at a common point, and we can follow that to Royal Gorge. Yes, that would work. That's also a distance that we would measure in several miles. I'm going to show you how to cut a substantial amount of that off, and yes, it's another shortcut. However, I have to be very careful. This shortcut is not marked. What I do know from past exploration is that it's 650 yards down this path and so I have to really hit my pace count otherwise I won't be able to find the shortcut. The terrain is going to be up, down, all around, very uneven. You can see we're going to have mud, rocks, uh, just a lot of stuff to have to work through and I still have to hit that pace count otherwise I'm going to have to go the long way. I really don't want to go the long way. Okay well Here's an idea in terms of terrain. And this is actually one of the easy segments. All right, well, according to pace count, our shortcut is through there. The sun's in approximately the right orientation. Um, well, I guess this is the point that we find out who's got it and who's just talking about it. Well, I'm just over 300 yards through the uh, shortcut. You can probably see through the trees. There's one of those uh, radio towers that I use as a marker. That's a great sign that we are heading in the right direction. Got to keep on going. Well, just over 500 yards and once again we have hit pay dirt. 
You can tell from the blue and orange markers, uh, that's where horse riders have put indications that this is uh, what's known as the Turkey Trot Trail, which is a section of the blue-orange. We need to head in that direction. The blue-orange will merge with the yellow, and then we can take the merged path right into the Royal Gorge Bridge, and that will be my next check-in. Well, nothing is ever easy, is it? This is uh, one of the risks of uh, being out on foot in horse territory, particularly after rains, is that horses come through here and tear all of this up, and that's a mechanical injury waiting to happen. So I think I'm going to work my way around to the side until this uh, terrain evens out more. All right, time check. And there is the Royal Gorge Bridge. Now you may be saying, hey, wait a minute, that looks exactly like the other bridge. You just made a big circle, dummy. Well, if you remember, as we came out the one horse bridge, everything was open around me. Here we have a tight tree line on both sides. So that's how I know this is a different bridge. Oh, it doesn't hurt that somebody has put up a blue, orange, uh, yellow marker right up there. That wasn't there the last time I came through. So that pretty much seals the deal. It's time for another brief stop and hydration break, and then I'll check back in and talk about the final mark of the exercise. This is one of my favorite areas just to come out and relax at the grasslands. I really like to come out here at night, turn my headlamp off, look at the stars, check out some meteorites, listen to the uh, coyotes howl. The uh, creek is uh, completely dried up. I've never seen that. Um, I'm going to have to come out and go down exploring in that area sometime. But for now, we need to talk about the next mark, which is <clears throat> making it back to Tadra, where we started. So once again, the map, the conventional wisdom, is this is the continuation of the Yellow Trail. Put one foot in front of the other, follow the Yellow Trail all the way back to Tadra, which is in that direction. But you know what I'm going to say. Yes, there's a shortcut. And it happens the shortcut is in this direction. Now, it's hard to tell, but there's actually private property over here. So there's a fence line. And um, fence lines are typically good things to follow in terms of handrails. And you can see that gap through the trees right there. And so I came through here one day and decided to go exploring off in that direction. And yes, it's over open terrain, but there is a walkable path that will intersect with the yellow trail in that direction and cut a significant amount of distance off. So this is the second gully I've got to make my way through uh, during this shortcut. This one is also challenging for the same reasons as the other in addition uh, especially down there at the bottom it's uh, it's a lot more rocky and doesn't get much sun and so the rocks are probably still a little bit on the wet side I'll uh, check in when I make it back to the other side and uh, show you where we're headed next actually I don't even need to do that look what's in the background yep things are looking good yeah, this is a, a little bit of a muddy, rocky mess. Going to work my way over here. I think I'm going to go up the left side here. That's the point of easiest ascent. Got my feet turned to the side. I really, really like this tread. It is just digging and locking into this loose dirt as I move up. Got my pack stuck a little bit, but that's no big deal. Okay, you can see this gets a lot of sun, so it's really nice and dry and stable here. All right, there we go. Head in this direction, catch up with the yellow trail, and then we can basically take the uh, combined blue, orange, and yellow right back into Tadra. 
And for the third time today, we have hit pay dirt. Came back through here, picked up the inbound of the blue, orange, yellow. Unfortunately, there is a near pond. It's just a muddy, almost quicksand-like mess. Could I make it through? I don't know. I really don't want to find out. Why go through when I can go around? So I'll check back in once we get on the other side. All right, the La Brea mud pit is back in that direction. I think I'm gonna take a nice leisurely stroll across open terrain and pick up the uh, inbound of the yellow, blue, orange right about there. Well, strictly speaking, Tadra is in that direction, but I want more of an exercise. So what I'm gonna do is head out over this open terrain and work my way up to the edge of the fence line then I have to go uphill across some what should right now be pretty uneven slick dirt and then I'll take the segment of the blue trail back into Tadra. I think that'll be a much more interesting test. Almost finished. That's the Tadra campground straight ahead. I'm going to work my way through outside the fence and my truck is parked roughly right there and I'll do a final summary. All right, final time check. Back here at the truck, back where we Started, I'm going to leave my gear out and staged. As it often happens, I'm out here and I get pulled into some sort of uh, search and rescue situation. So I ran into someone at Tadra. Apparently a horse rider started out on the yellow trail, uh, took a fall off the horse. Thankfully, the rider is okay. Made it back to Tadra, but the horse is out who knows where. Uh, there are a number of people out looking. I may get called into that search. I'm going to take about a 15 to 30 minute break here. If uh, I haven't been formally called into that activity by that time, I'm just going to leave. As far as the Moab 2 tactical, uh, A plus for today's evaluation. About the only thing I would add to the comments I've made before is I did try stepping on some larger, very irregular rocks. And I'd probably say, especially if the rocks are a bit on the sharp side and you're spending a lot of time on extremely rocky terrain, the Rocky Alpha Force and Salomon Forces might do a better job for you. But uh, I'm really sold on that balance between performance and fit comfort. Uh, I've never gone on an exercise of this length of time and been in as comfortable a situation. So I'm going to hang out here, grab a quick bite, hydrate, see how the uh, horse search situation turns out. The next evaluation is going to be a sustained rain test and then I'll probably do a six month update as well. And until then, as always, Thanks very much for your time and thanks for watching the video.